Hello and welcome to PMQ's Test Kitchen. I'm Brian Hernandez and I will be your guide today through the wonderful world of Neapolitan pizza dough. We're going to show you how to make a batch today that you can make right at home in your kitchen. Uh, I'm going to be using a five quart KitchenAid mixer. The batch that we're going to make is really about the maximum that a mixer this size can actually handle, so it's kind of perfect. What we're going to need today is 2.2 pounds of double zero flour. We're going to be using Caputo brand double zero flour. That's about two pounds, three ounces. We're going to need a gram of yeast. Make sure you have a good kitchen scale at home because it's very difficult to get a measurement that small if you don't. We're going to need one ounce of kosher salt and we're going to need 20 ounces of water. About 65 degrees should work. So what we're going to do first is we are going to dissolve our yeast into one of these cups of water. I split it up into two 10 ounce cups of water basically. So we'll dissolve our yeast into one cup and we will dissolve our salt into the other cup. And it'll take about three to five minutes for that yeast to kind of break down and dissolve. And from there, we will go on to the next step. So we'll check back in about three to five minutes. Okay, it's been about three minutes or so. And I'm checking here and our water uh, yeast is fully dissolved into our water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour that into our mixing bowl. Just last little bit, kind of swirl it, get as much of that yeast in there as we can since there's so little of it to begin with. And then we're going to take our 2.2 pounds of double zero flour and pour that right on top. And we're going to attach our bowl to the mixer, lower the mixing head and put it on the first setting. Basically we just want a, a low speed on this whole, for this whole mix. Right now it's really just kind of sifting the flour and getting that water at the bottom with the yeast, just kind of a base, very light mixing. So what next we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna take the salt water and you definitely wanna make sure that this has fully dissolved. First mistake I made was to just pour the salts in there and uh, not think about it. And then when I went to pour the water in, all the salt stayed at the bottom. So you live, you learn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna evenly distribute this around the edges. This might save you a minute of mixing time since it doesn't have to work as hard to fully distribute the water. You can do it however you want. So this is gonna mix for about 10 to 15 minutes on the low speed. And then from there, we will come back and check it and to see how it is formed up and go on to the next step. So see you in about 10 minutes. All right, all right, all right. So it's been about 10 or so minutes. Our dough ball has become uh, more of a cohesive unit. It's not too tacky or sticky to the touch. So we're gonna turn it off, unlock it, lift the head. Nice. Undo our bowl and voila, here is our Neapolitan dough ball. So as you can tell, it's a little more pliable than it was uh, Obviously at the beginning, it took about 10 minutes, it got a little bit softer. Um, and what we're gonna do now is just, we're going to leave this out on the table for at room temperature for about 40 minutes to allow that fermentation process to begin. Uh, let the yeast start eating the salts in the dough and creating CO2, giving uh, it a little, little bit more uh, air inside it and uh, you know increasing the size, basically letting it start to rise. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up in some plastic wrap and check back on it in 40 minutes. Okay, so we're back. It's been about 40 minutes. Our dough has been sitting out and oh yeah, you can already tell it's uh, gained a little bit more girth here. Um, it's definitely more pliable. Uh, it's gained a little bit of size. Uh, basically the fermentation process has begun, just allowing the dough to start rising, creating air within it making it pillowy and fluffy. From here, what we're gonna do is portion this into six nine and a half ounce dough balls and put those onto a lightly greased cookie sheet. So uh, we just take a cookie sheet, lightly grease it with some olive oil, and uh, from there, we just place our dough balls on there. So I'm gonna show you a couple different methods you can use. I've seen some of the big pros do it this way. Kind of roll it up this way, and uh, you just kind of pinch it off at the end. Uh, turn on my scale, let me see if I can do this. And if they do it right, they just kind of squeeze it off and the dough ball's almost already formed. Okay, this is not working for me. 
so that was a little more uh, strain that I would like to put on the dough ball. Uh, it's a little heavy. Perfect nine ounce dough ball. Next uh, method is really just kind of like, call it the twist, just twisting like a sausage. A little strenuous too. Uh, it's about 10 ounces. So you can really just use a dough knife if you wish. This one was a little heavy. This one was a little heavy. All right. So from here, we are going to form these dough balls and place them onto the screen. Basically, the motion is like this. You fold it in on itself and then kind of flip it over and fold it in on itself, flip it over until it start, you'll feel it start to become more dense and compact. What you want is to, you just kind of pinch it at the end there, um, kind of roll it, make sure, you know, round it out. You want a smooth surface like this. Um, when it starts getting too compact and dense on itself, you will notice it will start to have some stress tears like that. When these start forming, you really want to stop folding it in on itself. Um, just kind of round it out, pinch the bottom where the folds are, and uh, just kind of form it up. And put those folds side down, because as it rises, it'll become a solid dough ball. So we're going to just uh, portion out the rest of these dough balls, or uh, form them, I should say. And you can, you'll, you'll feel them, and you'll start to know right before it's going to start tearing. Just, you know, practice, just do it as much as possible. Um, yeah, just do it. So on this one, you can see I got a little overzealous in my uh, folding and it got some stress tears on there. That's what I was talking about. This is going to be okay. Um, as it rises out, it'll, it'll smooth itself out. And plus, when you start stretching the dough, it'll disappear. But any more than this, it's going to be, um, you know, strenuous to the dough and kind of affect the outcome. So. We're going to just pinch it off at the bottom there and uh, place those folds down. So now what we're going to do is just cover this in the minimal amount of olive oil on top, basically just to kind of keep it from drying out because the next step is a doozy. So basically we just kind of coat these guys all around. This will keep them nice and moist. Won't let the air won't dry them out. Don't have to be perfect. Just have to do your best. All right. So the next step here is to let leave these out at room temperature. Cover them in plastic. Leave them out at room temperature for four hours. And what this, this uh, resting period is essential to retard the formation of the gluten. Basically, it's gonna give it that airiness and the, the pillow-like texture that is signature of Neapolitan pizza dough. So we're gonna cover this in plastic wrap and just leave it at room temperature in four hours and we will come back and see how it is doing four hours. All right, so we've let these dough balls sit for about four hours at room temperature and you can already feel they're a lot more pliable they gained in some size basically uh, co2 is being formed inside creating the pillowy cushion of neapolitan goodness so what we're going to do from here is this is the home stretch we're just going to put these in the refrigerator for use tomorrow and uh, then from there we will make some delicious neapolitan pizzas so we're just going to go ahead and refrigerate these And they will be ready for the very next day. All right, so we're back. It is the next day. Um, we have pulled out our dough balls that we made the night before. Let them come back to uh, room temperature. Basically restart that fermentation process that we slowed down by putting them in the fridge. Uh, you'll see that, you know, when you touch them, they don't have much spring back. When you, they get dented, they tend to stay dented. So. From here, I'm gonna show you how to stretch out some Neapolitan pizza dough. Ooh, my mixer, get myself some space. First thing you wanna do is go ahead and put a, 
dusting of flour on your table. I'm heavy handed, so I like to use a little bit more flour. Find yourself a nice dough ball. Go ahead and put that down there, get it a little covered up. From here, we're going to pretty much make a ring about a quarter inch from the edge, which is going to be our crust ring. And we're not going to want to flatten that out. We're going to want to leave that as intact as long as possible, as well as the center here. We want to leave a mound there because this is the dough that we're actually going to be stretching. If we flatten this out too soon, we will have nothing to stretch and we'll have a very thin center and holes could form. And if there's a hole, a lot of times the sauce will leak through onto your peel, which will make your pizza stick. And it also could leak through onto the pizza stones that you're cooking on. And that'll actually create a hole in your pizza as well. It could be very ugly. So what we're going to do is pretty much just kind of anchor with one hand and stretch a little bit with the other one. And you'll see I kind of flip back and forth. But uh, just kind of want to get that uh, initial crust edge here. Stretch it out. You already see some uh, bubbles starting to form. You don't want to pop these. Um, basically, you don't want to dock this pizza or use a rolling pin because those bubbles are going to give it the signature Neapolitan look. They're going to rise up in the oven and give it a little bit of char, which is going to give it its look and its flavor that Neapolitan pizzas are known for. So now I'm going to start stretching a little bit like this. Uh, as I'm twisting, I'm kind of stretching as well. Next method we can show is a steering wheel, pinching it still about a quarter inch over the edge, leaving this intact. Uh, just kind of turn it like a steering wheel, pulling the edges out a little bit. Kind of like gravity do most of the work on this. It's gonna have enough weight to where it'll kind of stretch itself. Next one I wanna show you is the kaboom. I like this one. It's uh, how you would describe an explosion to your friends with your hands. Basically, you'll start with your fingers touching each other underneath the dough, and you'll slowly stretch them out. Uh, a lot of times, the first one is kind of tricky to get to, but with Neapolitan dough, it's so, it gives so well that it's really, this is one of my favorite methods. It's a nice, even stretch. But if you hold this up to the light, you'll be able to see that it is pretty, uh, it's a pretty even distribution of dough. There are no thin spots. You can see some of these signature bubbles forming right here and here. Uh, all over, uh, you'll get them in the crust as well, and that's what's going to give your pizza its look and its taste. So now we've got a pretty good circumference on this. Um, you can push it down, and the, one of the last steps usually, um, you hold it here, and you'll pull some of this crust out just a little bit. You don't want to flatten it, but this will help just get those last couple inches. So what we're going to do next is get our pizza peel out, put a dusting on that. I usually give a big one, knock it off, and then just a little bit more. Don't ask me why, it seems to work for me. So <laughs> however it's gonna work for you, do it that way. And what this is gonna do is create the lubrication for your pizza to, do, to actually slide off the peel and into the pizza oven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this down here and it's gonna kind of float on this flour in the cushion of air. So for the last, we wanna do our last couple stretches. Not pushing down too much, we don't want to mash it into the pizza peel because that's actually going to be counterproductive to why we put the flour on there in the first place. So this is about your average size for Neapolitan pizza dough, 10 inches, 10, 11 inches. So you can make it bigger, smaller, however you wish. So from here, you're going to add your toppings. Start with your sauce um, and cheese usually. Uh, every couple layers of toppings, you want to check your pizza and make sure it still has movement there. Because if it doesn't, then you're going to have a very hard time getting it off the peel and into the oven. So what I, what I do is every couple layers, uh, I might just gently press them down into the sauce. I'm not mashing them, as I said, into the pizza peel, because that's going to be counterproductive. But just a little, little bit of pressure and makes the sauce kind of act as a glue. Your toppings like your black olives, maybe um, you know, balled up sausage or meatballs, stuff like that, it's gonna tend to roll off. Those are the ones you really kind of have to be protective of. But you know, you're gonna lose an olive or two. It's only pizza. So every couple layers, just make sure you got some of this motion so it's not stuck down there. If it does stick, just kind of pick it up and stretch it a little bit, get some more air back under the dough again. Uh, if you have to, absolutely have to, put just a 
tiniest bit of flour. That's really not um, the best way to do it, but I mean, if you're in a pinch, you can go ahead and do it that way. So lastly, what I'm gonna show you here is just kind of the, the motions to get your pizza off the peel. It's basically two motions. One's gonna be a thrust forward, creating a little bit of forward motion in the pizza dough, thusly. See, it's just I'm not throwing it off the peel, but I'm just giving it a little bit of forward motion. So a little bit of forward motion there. One more, forward motion. Next step is to pull it quickly out from underneath the dough. So we've done it forward, created some forward motion. Next step is just yank it out as fast as you can, not as fast as you can, but quickly, just to be careful that, you know, you don't take the pizza with you, because that could be disastrous. So together with those motions, our uh, forward motion, yank it out real quick. Do one more real quick and just, you know, make a dough, put it on here and just practice it. It'll come, it'll come eventually. Be second nature. So forward motion, pull it out real quick. And now your pizza is on your pizza stone. And if this, you're making it in a wood fired oven, which is what this dough is actually designed for, you really only have to leave it in there for a short while before the bottom is gonna firm up enough to where you can manipulate your pizza. Uh, when I say short while, I'm talking 15 to 20 seconds. Um, you do not wanna cook in a wood fired oven and leave the pie unattended. You have to tend this oven. Um, so after about 15, 20 seconds, the bottom's gonna become a little more firm and it's gonna make it so much easier to actually manipulate the pizza and put it where you need to. So after uh, about 15, 20 seconds, you kinda wanna keep an eye on it, make sure it's not burning. The edge closest to the fire is also always gonna cook fastest, of course. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that once it starts, you're, you can watch it cook flash rise right before your eyes. So once it starts getting a little bit char, uh, pick it up, twist it around, slide it back down. And it'll be so much easier than the initial one because you got a firmer bottom. Basically, the process is it's flash, it's almost like nature's microwave. It's flash steaming it from the inside. The moisture content in this dough is being cooked at such high temperatures that it kind of puffs up like a balloon and cooks from the inside out in 90 seconds. It's going to take you longer to make one of these pizzas than it is to actually cook it. So, uh, for PMQ's Pizza Kitchen, I'm Brian Hernandez. Thank you for joining us on our adventure into Neapolitan pizza dough. I encourage you to actually get up and uh, try to make this dough yourself. Let us know how it uh, worked for you. Let us know on Facebook. Uh, you can go ahead and find us at PMQ.com and give us a ring. So uh, for PMQ's Test Kitchen, I'm Brian Hernandez, and we'll see you guys next time.